Welcome and thank you, particularly to you courageous, critical thinkers for being here. Thank you, Topher, and to your team for putting on this wonderful event. The heading for this series of talks is the thin veneer of civilization, tyranny for your own good. I suspect that everyone attending this event can relate to the topic as this has been our lived experience for the last four years. Whether you lived in Victoria, Tasmania, the Northern Territory, Western Australia, South Australia or Queensland, it was the same the country over. Autocratic premiers standing with their chief health officers, all acting under the banner of we are doing this for you, keeping you, the public, safe, as they trashed human rights, bodily autonomy, informed consent, and broke every medical ethical code since the, laid down since the time of Hippocrates. Their behaviour typified the definition of tyrannical rule. It was cruel, unreasonable, oppressive and arbitrary. The voices of dissent were crushed in a merciless manner. Scapegoats were created and used to justify their authority. There was no evidence of either democracy or freedom being practiced within our society. And this continues today. Oops, sorry. There has been a massive rise in all-cause mortality since the rollout of the gene-based injectables, both in Australia and around the world. Vax-related injuries continue to be ignored by the majority of our politicians and medical profession. And that the medical profession and their leadership have failed to raise this issue is appalling, but somewhat understandable given the corruption of medical education uh, the med medical education system, medical journals, research and medical regulation by big pharma and corporate interests. The combination of government and big business-led censorship and propaganda through the mainstream media and dominant social media groups, along with the de demise of an independent judicial system, are signs that we are moving along a very dangerous pathway. So the focus of my talk today is actually the World Health Organization and their current bid to increase their power and wealth and impose a public health tyranny across the globe. They aim to do this via the approval of several legal documents through their own World Health Assembly. This power grab seems ably assisted by most of our own politicians media and government and a government's willingness to outsource our public health decisions to this organisation without serious consultation or debate with the Australian people. The WHO is an organisation which was formed with the apparent benevolent and honourable goal of improving the health of all peoples around the world. The WHO was also designed to be the central coordinator of international responses to specific infectious disease epidemics which cross national borders. The WHO is an organisation beset with major conflicts of interest. This has arisen due to its current funding arrangements, yeah, public-private partnerships whereby most of its funding is voluntary but comes with strings attached. The investor's primary goal is to gain a return on their investment with minimal or no regard to improving health outcomes. On top of this dubious funding arrangement, the WHO has no accountability, rarely reviews its decisions, pays no tax, has no legal liability and has amassed a litany of management failures. And one must not forget the senior WHO management involvement in the well-documented sexual exploitation crimes in Uganda during the Ebola outbreak in 2021. The two documents which the WHO wishes to pass into law are, are known as the International Health Regulation Amendments and the Pandemic Treaty, though this is known by several other names, you know, Pandemic Accord or Pandemic Agreement or the Hookah Plus. 
If these documents are passed, they will legalise what I call the pandemic industrial complex. This complex, like its sibling, the military industrial complex, which Dwight Eisenhower warned about in his uh, farewell speech, is designed to increase the power and wealth of its stakeholders by creating the very scenarios that will allow them to sell more of their product or demand the need for greater power to resolve a crisis possibly instigated by them. For, an ex for example, arms manufacturers benefit from wars, wars that their colleagues in the military industrial complex may have helped instigate. Vaccine manufacturers and pharmaceutical corporations benefit from producing new vaccines and pharmaceutical products to a new disease that their associates may have been involved in creating, in which they provide an expensive solution to the problem they created and treatments for the side effects of their products. So who are the pandemic industrial complex? It's an informal collection of financiers, bankers, the same people behind the military industrial complex, I dare say, defence bureaucrats, pharmaceutical corporations, key politicians, health bureaucrats, uh, think, uh, certain think tanks like the WEF, research scientists, which includes those scientists involved in gain-of-function research or bioweapons research, and influential medical personnel. These people combine to create and then push policy initiatives that influence government decisions and direction. Invariably, these government's decisions involve the use of large amounts of taxpayer funds which purchase whatever the complex is selling. Consider how much was spent on pharmaceutical and pandemic-related products in the last four years. And consider how big businesses were allowed to flourish while small and medium-sized businesses were smashed and the bureaucrats pushed to increase their power at every opportunity. So no wonder we are in the midst of such a dangerous economic, health and social crisis at the present time. There can be no doubt these documents will formalise the tyranny that began with such force in early 2020. The WHO forms a key part of the complex. This supranational bureaucracy that wishes to gain control of public health around the globe is centralising power and handing it to one individual, the Director General. This Director General has no accountability, no accountabilities for his actions and has full diplomatic immunity. Arguably, they will be one of the most visibly powerful individuals in the world, being able to call public health emergencies around the globe on a whim, if everybody can remember monkeypox. The emergencies do not actually have to be real. They can amount to a situation perceived by certain individuals at the WHO as a potential risk. The Director General will have the power to order lockdowns, masking, to mandate injectable therapeutic products released within 100 days of their development under emergency use authorisation, with complete immunity for the manufacturers. The bureaucrats will be allowed to access our private data, they will employ massive censorship through mis- and disinformation legislation with severe penalties for those who oppose the narrative. They can impose travel restrictions and so much more, and they do not have to justify any of their actions. Um, uh, our governments, by outsourcing management of public health, will be obliged to follow the WHO's directives. While the WHO is aiming to increase its control through the IHR amendments if it passes on May the 27th, 2024 in the World Health Assembly, it is at the same time pushing the concept of One Health. The One Health module gives the illusion of a common sense approach to human and environmental interactions. However, the WHO is fixated on weaponising potential risks by exaggerating possible harm that could arise from human and animal contact and the development of zoonoses, that's animal to human uh, infection. Their actions seem to be taken with the firm aim of generating fear throughout the community. They then need to capitalise on these exaggerated fears by declaring they need constant biosurveillance and centralised control in order to, pre to prevent outbreaks. 
This approach is guaranteed, guaranteed to be used by public health bureaucrats to claim that measures will be needed to control climate boiling. As this represents a danger to human health and biodiversity, we are currently being encouraged to reduce red meat consumption and we're being told that there's a need to reduce farming of cattle and sheep to reduce methane and there will be restricted travel for those not considered worthy. The other legal document that I mentioned is the Pandemic Treaty. This is as effectively a trade deal where the stakeholders in the WHO devise systems to maximise and dis distribute the profits from the One World Biosurveillance State and the Pandemic Industrial Complex. This treaty is all about the acquisition and distribution of wealth and it highlights the WHO's lack of focus on actual health and well-being around the globe. I would suggest it's very anti-human. I am here not only as a representative of the Australian Medical Professional Society, an industrial association for health professionals who is fighting not only against the overreach of employers and regulatory authorities, but also against the medical censorship for the rest, uh, medical censorship and for the restoration of proper informed voluntary consent and a patient's right to bodily autonomy without conditions, and for the government and health bureaucrats to be removed from the doctor-patient relationship. I am also here speaking on behalf of the newly formed Aligned Council of Australia, a collaboration of over 27 diverse groups representing more than a million Australians. The ACA are an extremely concerned about the implications these WHO documents and about the, who, the implications of these WHO documents and the incredible lack of interest and knowledge and apathy being shown by most of our politicians at this critical time. The government are effectively outsourcing our public health policy and management to a deeply corrupted institution which has a litany of fa failures attached to its name. Public health policy will be used to control every aspect of our lives. So this collaboration of groups are embarking on a massive public education and, politi public and political education campaign which will be broadcast, broadcast of, out over the next 10 weeks. The aim of the campaign is to awaken all Australians to exactly who the who are and to the danger this organisation poses to our health, human rights and economic prosperity. We have less than three months to educate and activate the community and our politicians. Do not let politicians abrogate their duty to a corrupt and incompetent international bureaucracy. All the critical thinkers here have a responsibility to get the message out and raise this issue with those who've got their heads stuck in the sand. It is time for citizens of Australia to stand up, make our politicians accountable and get out of the who. Okay, so that's uh, the number of the groups. I'm sorry if I've left uh, groups off. My IT skills weren't very good and I might have missed them in the screenshot. So, yes, uh, and that's... Uh, we'll... Okay. So I would encourage those who are not familiar with the WHO to visit the following websites. Uh, to gain more information and a better understanding of the problem Australia and the world faces. I would also encourage and say it's the duty of every awake citizen to get out and speak with as many people as possible about this issue and plant the seeds of change. We need politicians to feel the heat so they will stand up and debate this most vital issue. Thank you. Thank you.